due to the June 6, 2022 Berlin Select Board meeting. With us tonight is uh, uh, huh. Dave, I can't, Dave Sawyer, Carl Parton. On my right is Flo Smith and Joe Staub. With us also is Vince Connie, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Uh, first order of business is the second public informational hearing for zoning changes. Um, let's see, any additions or changes to the ag agenda for the zoning, Vince? No, sir. Um, any public comment? Hearing none, the public hearing for the proposed amendments to land use and development regulations. Tom? So, uh, with me is uh, Carla Weasel, the chair of the Berlin Planning Commission, and Brandy Saxton, our consultant. Uh, so, since the last time we've met, the, the, uh, the town has not received any comments on the zoning, proposed zoning regulations. You may recall that the Planning Commission held a public hearing. You folks had one a couple of weeks ago. So, this would be the third opportunity. To, for folks to weigh in, and we have not received any comments to date on that, Mr. Chair. Okay. Is there any comments on it now? Hearing none. Uh, public hearing for the proposed amendments to the official town map. Again, the, uh, the town map has been distributed through the Planning Commission at their public hearing. It's been warned for two public hearings with the select board. This is the second of, of those two. It's been on the, the, the town website. I think you folks have seen a, 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 a copy in your packet. Really the only change that uh, on the official map was that in the new town center, all streets have to be a minimum of a B street standards, and, and that includes sidewalks lighting and treescape uh, and so that's really the, 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 the significant change to the official map but no comments have been received since the uh, first meeting first meeting Correct. any comments on this now okay and public hearing proposed amendments of the Berlin town plan so you may recall uh, again that the Planning Commission held a meeting on this and then uh, the, the select board advertised two public hearings with these amendments to the town plan. As part of the update, the town plans are typically good for eight years. The town of Berlin developed a new town plan about four years ago and got it uh, approved by the constituency of the town. Um, in that uh, town plan, there was a, a condition by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission that the Planning Commission look at um, two items in the town plan and come back with some amendments within four years. We're in that four-year window. Uh, it's, uh, it deals with uh, vocational training um, in the community and uh, daycare facilities. So uh, the Planning Commission uh, hired the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to actually help write the amendments to the town plan that would satisfy them. And, and so that's the basis of what these changes in the town plan uh, represent. And they have uh, written, and it's been distributed to the select board today, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission have, have written a, a letter basically stating that um, if this is adopted, they will, they will approve it on their, on their end. Is that been for them, yeah. they're waiting for this okay. process. Okay, any comments on this? Hearing none, uh, Vince, I'm, a, I'm at a loss here um, since this this portion of the meeting is not the select board, but the. the public hearing mm -hmm. and you do we take in I'm wondering if we should do the vote here or if we should wait till the select board meeting itself 
because yeah, it makes sense. And then the other trouble is I don't see it listed under the agenda items. Yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't even think about that when I prepared the agenda. Quite frankly, so yeah. You got is this time that, sensitive so. in any way? It, it's time sensitive in the fact that, um, yeah. particularly the the changing changes in the zoning and the official map were conditions of the downtown board for our, our new town center designation. They are prepared to grant us a non-conditional um, uh, permit as soon as the select board signs off on, on these items. The, um, I know Fox Run, their, that development is, has to be in a designated yeah. area, so from that standpoint, there is some time, time sensitivity. Since there's no money involved, can we add this to the agenda and uh, vote on it, or? I, I think we can, right? I believe well, we'll probably can. catch flack for it no matter what. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and there's no other um, uh, discussion on the uh, hearing. Uh, uh, we entertain a motion to adjourn the hearing. I make a motion to under adjourn tonight's hearing. A second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. The hearing is closed. And I would like to invite, uh, welcome everybody to the select board meeting. Um, the characters haven't changed much. The um, um, Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? As a matter of fact, there are. There is a, a deletion of the amusement permit. Uh, the company was going to run an event at the uh, mall but recognized that they didn't have time to put it pull it together so they pulled their permit okay. uh, and there are two additions one is for the approval of a permit to replace a culvert by a Ms. Smith on Pine Hill Drive and the second is to uh, have a decision or a vote on the uh, public hearing for the uh, proposed uh, land use and development regulations, the official town map, and the Berlin town plan for approval. Okay. Um, anything else? That's it for changes. For uh, public comment? Hearing none, we will entertain um, uh, motions on the land use development regulations. I'd make a motion to approve the land use development regulations as the amendments and the official town map and amendments to the Berlin town plan. I think we have to one at a time. Just to, okay. <laughs> I'd make a motion to, uh, to approve the proposed amendments to the land use and development regulations. Your second? Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, motion on hearing the proposed amendments to the official town map. I'd make a motion to approve the proposed amendments to the official town map. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And uh, I'd make the motion to approve the amendments to the Berlin town plan. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And uh, public works staff position, hiring position? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. I sure. know, I know uh, uh, Mr. Conti has a, a document uh, for board signatures to that, to, for this, what you, yeah. and um, that, those documents are imperative for us to get our, our are they here on the tables then somewhere? They are in the uh, in one of the manila folders that says for signature. That's not it. It's in there though. It's in one of those. Maybe they will. That's some license. That's no li there's li yeah, there's liquor licenses in there. There should be a that's liquor manila license. envelope. Probably this one right here. That's the one right there. Land use. That's the one.
be, the other two should be in there too. So. They might be there behind are, uh, it. It's, all a, it's a collective. Okay. Uh, I was feeling optimistic. <laughs> Brad, can I get one of them? put all our eggs in one basket on that document. Thank you. I'll just give a brief update on some sure with, with the with the new town center. You may recall that the 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 town was looking to acquire a 3.8 acre tract of land from the school. Uh, we, they've gone through the subdivision. The subdivision is now uh, the, become approved. The surveyor hired the town hired a surveyor will be out tomorrow and Wednesday setting the new pins plans on on um, filing the mylar with the town clerk this Friday and I know uh, Mr. Conti has uh, has sent draft uh, quick quick claim deed language to uh, the, their council the school board's council so I can envision by the end of this month that the town becomes ownership of that 3.8 acre parcel um, so it's good news. It's a uh, it's been a lot of work to get that done. So uh, uh, just yeah. give, give you that update. The the uh, the Berlin um, uh, Development Review Board has approved the the um, applications for the Fox Run project, the 30 unit housing, and it has also approved the uh, the Starbucks um, uh, restaurant over there. So it, it's pending. And those permits now. Thank so, you. So hopefully the grand list will start to grow now. It will. Well, the se the senior housing project is done. <coughs> so yeah, it'll definitely grow by that as well. There should be two more uh, papers for signature for the town map and the town plan. I put it all in all in one. one. It's all, all in one. one. Okay. There's nothing you want to say. No, that's good. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tom. Thank you. Then some going to take this. He's going to run down to ACCD. Make sure you can give me a copy. Though. I will, though. No, I will. Thank you, everyone. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Good evening. Appreciate you both. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Public Works staff position hiring decision. Yeah. This is a carryover from the I think two meetings <clears throat> ago now. Uh, well, we talked about it. We also had the. Uh, the chair of the Public Works uh, Board uh, have a discussion uh, with the board about that, and uh, they went away and reviewed it again and came back with really no no changes to the um, to the job description and title that's that's in your package. It's the same one that you saw before. So we're just looking, uh, basically, just we're just looking for the approval to move forward with uh, hiring that that position. And this position is paid for out of uh, funds generated from the water sewer. That's correct. Okay. Uh, motion on this? I make the motion to approve the hiring of the Public Works Board Supervisor as an exempt management position. I second that. Any further discussion? I, I think I'd just like to uh, summarize exactly. Uh, what we're what we're getting and what we're losing and what we're saving again. I know we discussed it a little, but I, I wasn't quite sure that we were ready to pull the trigger on the hire after that discussion. And it could have been my misunderstanding, but um, so I got the questions I'll throw out there is is essentially this will replace the appointed water sewer commission, the public works board, the public works mm -hmm. board phase out. Yep. Okay. So it's going from a volunteer to uh, to a higher position, basically, volunteer commission to a higher position. An understaffed volunteer. Absolutely. Well, that goes without saying for every volunteer commission there there is, I think. But um, and we talked about savings a little bit. But, uh, um, I guess I wasn't quite sure uh, as far as job duties what would be. 
subtracted from, from the current zoning administrator and placed upon the public works uh, supervisor and, and how that would change the dynamic in the office. Um, well, part of the savings was there were two subcontractors we're hiring now. Yes. And those would go away. Uh, no, eventually. No. They're not going to go no. away yeah. initially. Yeah. It's going to take a little while before they the, would be the, eliminated. The, the plan was three to six months transition period for the new person with, the, with both the board and the, uh, the contractors. Uh, but within three to six months, when everybody's comfortable, then they would start to phase out. The subcontractors do the work, too, as well, just not the planning, right? Correct. Right. So we'll still have some subcontractors. Yeah, that right. work for the supervisor, Correct. so that those costs won't be completely right. eliminated. I mean, right. if we if we're we're digging and installing, obviously, right. for now, that some of that and and be, uh, some of it may. There's not a lot be of talk right. about the individual who has the great knowledge that might be retiring soon. He's kind of does that this job uh, as a not as one of the two subcontractors, right? No, He's no, the he is one of the he is one of the sub subcontractors. Yes. Okay. So he actually does the work too? Yes. Okay. Diane, do you remember the, what we figured it out as far as the savings? Well, I don't know if it's so much of a savings as more of like a break even point. Because we were saying if this person has all the benefits, and depending on how much you're going to pay them, it's going to pay them like 80 something thousand a year. But the benefits we're thinking would be like 127 thousand a year. So it would be slightly more than what we're paying for now for the two subcontractors that we have and for um, Tom's time. Yeah. However, the sewer commission and water commission, is in, um, they're in very good shape. So if they have to, um, obviously they can raise more money too, you know, yeah. in the next time to make, to make sure that everything is covered, but they're also in a very good cash position right now. Meals, Carl? Well, I don't know. I, I'm a measure twice, <laughs> cut once type of guy. And, and certainly, uh, I'm, I'm uh, measure three or four times when it comes to expansion of personnel. Uh, and, uh, that's an expense that never goes away. It, you know, it's not a one time budget item. It's not uh, something that, uh, uh, you know, we fix and don't worry about for several years. That's uh, adding positions in government is is typically forever. So I just. But I think this is a, a position though, that you do have some control as far as how much you're going to spend. Like with the subcontractors, you don't not as much. But they say we're going to increase our expenses by you know we're going to charge you 10 percent more. And especially with sewer water, you're not going to have much choice. Mm -hmm. See, that's one of the that's one of the problems I see is uh, with subcontractors is that with the fellow who's retiring, when he goes away, he has no obligation to uh, impart any knowledge. Right. Well, but at least now he's here, and if we can get that knowledge into a into a page form and into a, a for another person, even if it's by uh, by road, it's uh, I think it's a uh, Good thing, because eventually we're going to need them. As we grow, yes, and we are growing pretty quickly in the sewer. Yeah. And this it's department probably is going to grow by having other employees in it within probably the near future. Yeah. We we talked a little bit about it with the previous board in a re, not a retreat, but in a, an offsite kind of thing that we had about the town growth and thing and. That was one of the one of the big discussions was about a establishing a over time public works department, department. right? So, at, but again, we want to manage the growth properly for that as well. Um, when we talk about a contractor for doing a lot of the digging work, well, these are things that we can look at now as well, um, and maybe should have been all along. Is during the summer months with our road crew, there may be an opportunity as we. We're talking about training now, right, for equipment operators on our road crew to be a little more diversified as well, where the town can actually do some of its own digging work. And then the, then you'd have to have a plan in place to track that as far as pay-wise so that it yep. comes out of the highway exactly. department and now the Absolutely. public works. It gets charged in the, in the proper department. Yep. 
Absolutely. But those are the kind of things that, that we are looking at. We'll be talking about it more as we as we move forward. So anything else, Carl? No, guess not. Um, any other comments on the public works? Okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carry. Are those opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, Phil Gentilly, speed limit signs on Payne Turnpike. Phil? Phil, you're on mute. Text. Well, so basically, Phil was concerned about uh, speed down through. Yep, on the uh, on Payne Turnpike South, um, people are uh, ripping by his place. Um, so you'd like to you'd like to uh, put some additional speed limit signs in down there between his place and the Northfield border to uh, raise awareness that it's uh, only 35 and not uh, 55. And he did have an incident uh, last fall, I believe it was. He had, uh, you know, he crosses the road to go to his place and he had his grandkids there and he had a caution child uh, board out with a sign on it. And some lady drove by and took the sign and dragged it right down the road. And then the pickup that was following her ran over the sign as well. <laughs> so, uh, do we currently know what we have for signs and how far they're placed down through there? I, I believe, and I'd have to verify. I think there's only one sign down near the Northfield border at this time, coming in this way. What's the speed limit on the Northfield side? That's a good question. I think it varies. I think there's where the corners are coming through. I think it's 25 and I think it's 35, same as ours after the corners, I think. Has um, the police looked into those um, signs you put up? That tells you flashes? Yeah. We, they've had one up on the Brookfield side um, probably for a couple of weeks now. Although I think they just recently moved it. Um, yeah. But they do have one. What about their cart? The cart, I'm not sure where the cart's at right now, but they have a cart also. I was wondering if placing that up down there for a while, Mike. We can certainly try it. Well, you can talk to uh, yeah, I can the talk chief, to the chief. And see what can be done. Yeah. Uh, if there's no other comments on this, Speed limit on uh, Brookfield, I mean on Payne Turnpike South. Well, I don't know if I'll solve it, but it's. Well, I, what I'll do in between now and the next meeting as well, I'll go take a look at the, the quantity of signs. Um, if there's, if it looks like there's a large gap and we might need one or two, I'll come back and make a recommendation to the sure. board on that. And then and I'll talk to the chief about maybe doing a little bit more increased patrols and uh, putting the uh, cart up down there and yeah. maybe the, also the one on the boat, so. Okay. Um, Conservation Commission application proposal for approval. Hello, 
Um, let me turn the video on. You have information in your package on that as well. Had time to review that, or would you like me to overview what? Well, um, taking over it again, we don't know who's listening or who's going to, so we like taking have them informed. Okay, let me let me start over again. So um, this was an uh, application and a review process that um, we've been working on, and this is for projects for people or groups of people to make a request for projects in the town forest, either on the conserved land or the town forest. And a project we're defining that as an activity um, that may be running for a season or all year, a new activity or a change to an activity, um, or it could be a new trail or a modification to the trail. So something that's fairly big that has the potential to impact either current visitors to the, to the forest or impact the natural resources. Um, and there's two parts to it. There's an application that the person who would like to make a request to use to make a change or put a project forth can fill out and the um, Conservation Commission can definitely help them do that and you know work through the application with them. And then the second part is um, guidelines for making a decision. And the guidelines are based on, um, our conservation easement is based on the management plan. It's based on best practices. Um, and the three big things that we're looking at is, first of all, we wanna determine if Berlin um, as a whole would like the project. You know, is this something that there's a demand for um, and also, is it compatible with um, existing visitors and is it compatible with the natural resources up on the mountain? So that's the first thing we're looking at. The second is, can the group who is submitting the proposal, um, do they have the resources and the know-how to actually implement it? And if they don't have the resources, is Berlin willing to give the resources to do that. And then the final um, thing that we're looking at is long-term sustainability. Um, you know, if it's a new trail, how's it gonna be sustained? Who's gonna pay for it? Um, how does that happen? Um, so there's two parts. The first part is the um, application and it's two, three pages, but basically a description of the project, who would be interested in the project, what's the public interest for the project. Um, so after the general information, the next part is um, a section to determine um, who would implement the project and what's their experience and what are their resources. Um, so can they implement the project? And then on, Part number seven is ongoing maintenance. How is this going to be sustained over the years? And then the final part is um, just there, if they have experience in other areas, you know, what is their input as far as how do we manage multiple users? How do we manage the um, resources? We're trying to get input from them on how they do that. And once they submit this project, then um, we have a set of guidelines for um, evaluating the project. One is to make sure it's um, in agreement with the easement and the forest management plan. And if, if there's a conflict with the forest, forest management plan, um, what kind of modifications would we need to make to that? And would they be in agreement with the easement? Um, the next section is, is there public demand for this and public support for this type of project? Um, and then the third section is um, what would be the natural resource impact up on the mountain of the project. Um, the next section is visitor management. How do we manage, you know, if there is going to be user conflict, how would we manage that? Think about that up front. Um, and then we want to know about construction. How would it be constructed? Who's going to pay for it? What are their experiences for doing it? 
And the final question for the evaluation is um, sustainability and ongoing going maintenance. And so those are the areas that we're proposing to review a project on. And I, I think the really important thing is to have a process. We're not completely tied to this specific set of um, criteria. You know, this was our best shot at it. But, um, you know, we've had multiple people come in with requests. They're being handled differently. Um, it seems like everybody should know up front what the criteria are and everybody should be handled. Um, their request should be processed in the same manner, um, just to be fair to everybody and, you know, have people know how their proposal is going to be evaluated. And we do, you know, have several things sort of floating in the background. I've heard about e-bikes, you know, um, somebody's up there with snowboarding, you know, there's, there's things that I hear about that could potentially expand. So we really, in my opinion, need to have something in place so that we can process this through in a, a fair and um, sort of logical way. So this is our proposal. Um, I'm open for questions. Any questions for Ed Lindley? I'd just like to comment. Uh, thank you for the thorough process. It's, it's very well organized. Uh, I guess the only question I have is, um, as I look at this, and, and this is probably an easy answer, but uh, do you consider maintenance to existing trails or, or infrastructure or current uses something that would need, would require this document to be filled out? Um, you mean ongoing maintenance to something we have going already? Yeah, like existing place? trails, the bridge, uh, any current use of the of the forest trail system at all? I, yeah, that's not really the purpose of this document. Um, the, are the covered in the corridor management agreement. Okay. Yeah, we have two user groups up on the mountain right now. They both are under a corridor management agreement, okay. and that defines our responsibilities and their responsibilities. And okay. It's renewed every year. Thank you. <coughs> That's all I have. Any other questions? I have a motion. I make the motion to approve the Berlin Town Forest Project application through the Conservation Commission as presented to us this evening. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion on this? I, I personally would just like to see some kind of format of how these would be handled if an application was put in. If an application was put in, some kind of time frame of acknowledgement that uh, the application to, to not just the applicant but to the board uh, when an application is put in and how the, how long the process may take. I understand if there's if there's some invasive species or anything like that. The process will take longer, but I think there ought to be some kind of framework uh, of how the application will be handled. The framework or timeline? Some kind of timeline yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Kind of a process. There, of there are some challenges to that because this could be looking at a small project or a large, larger project. Um, I think definitely we can acknowledge and get going very quickly. Um, there are some things where you may need to see the trail in different seasons, um, if it's a new trail that's going in. So if, for instance, if we're gonna put a new bike trail in, we may need to see what it looks like in the spring in that time frame to see how wet it is. Um, you know, so that, there could be challenges putting a really hard deadline on it. What we could do is if we get an application is make, you know, an agreement about what the timeline would be, you know, right up front at the beginning, depending on the scope of the project, that would be um, an option. So something small, we might say, you know, it's a couple months, something that's extensive, you know, we could agree up front how long it should take.
Any other comments? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, uh, can, I, can I say a word? This is Phil Gentilly. Hey, Phil. Hey, Brad, how you doing? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, I was on another timetable. I had it up on my screen, but I didn't know you guys were so far ahead. Do you have any questions for me on my request, not for the Conservation Commission, but for my request on speed limit signs? Yeah, we took and had a discussion about that. Uh, we were going to see about putting the, uh, the uh, speed card up there on uh, Payne Turnpike South. Um, we'll see if the, if the chief can do a patrol or two. I don't know what else we can do. I, well, I would suggest that we put a 35 mile an hour speed limit sign right at the Northfield Berlin line. Yeah. We I, talked about that too. Yeah. I'm going to take a look yeah. at the signs, Phil, what's out there and, and where they are as well, and then come back with a recommendation on what we need to add. So I'll, Yeah, because basically I'll, any, I'll, I'll all, all the traffic, the all the traffic coming from Northfield and Williamstown can go 50 until they hit my property, which is through the Mirror Lake intersection. So we have trucks and cars in the morning going 50 and 60. And now we have children in the intersection. We have a, two school bus stops turnaround. I mean, it's pretty, it's a lot more than it just appears on the surface. Uh, we've had terrible speeding problems and the least we can do is make put 35 miles an hour right at the town line. So if nothing else, the police chief is covered by saying, okay, you are over the limit. Right now, they're not over the limit till they get to my house. They can go 50. Meanwhile, last year, the select board all passed 25 miles an hour on Mirror Lake and Brookfield Road. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there, I feel. And I'd also like to petition for children's science too now that they're children living here at the Four Corners. So that's just my, if, if that can be considered, sorry I was late, but uh, I've been waiting three weeks to say this. So <laughs> I just wanted to get some words in. Yeah, uh, so when you go up there, Vince, uh, you set a time with uh, Phil and yep, take your cruise down through? Yeah, I absolutely will. Okay. I'll be in touch, Mr. Gentilly. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Not a problem, Phil. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Vermont Land Trust letter review and decision. Yep. There's a, a couple of pages in your uh, package about this. The um, Vermont uh, Land Trust and the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board are looking for a response to this letter only if the select board uh, or the Planning Commission believe that the proposed project doesn't comply with the town plan and zoning efforts. Um, the Planning Commission hasn't found an issue with it. Um, if there's no such concerns, then we don't have to do a response letter. Um, so it's just, it's really a, a matter of the board now to see if they have any issue with this. And then we'll, I have to, I will address it with the land trust and the conservation board through a letter. If there isn't, then no response is required. So this is to conserve, there's a map here, of um, what used to be, I believe, was the uh, at the end of Glenish Road, um, the old Maloney Place. The old Maloney place. Um, and they want to conserve everything that's outlined in there in the yellow. Now then the, the current, the new owners. Yeah, the, um, so there's no, um, trying to think. Is the farm under uh, land use now? I'd have to check. I don't know the answer to that question if they are under land use or not. I'd have to check. The, the farm that's here, the, the new owners of the farm. Maloney. Uh, at the end of Glennis Road, the old Maloney farm. Right. Is that, you don't Last know I knew it was. But it was under land use? Okay. And this won't change the tax revenue off the place? No, it shouldn't change the tax revenue. If it's not in current use, and they put it in current use, obviously. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see here. So, do we need a motion on the letter? 
whether we whether the board has an issue with it or not. If there's no issue, then no letters required. Um, anyone have an issue? I just wanted to clarify: the current owner of this property wants this to happen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're the ones asking for it, actually. Okay. Uh, it's Griffin. Yeah, it's right. Okay. Griffin is Griffin and McKay are the new owners of the property. Yeah. And the planning commission had no issues. The with planning it. commission didn't have any issue with okay. it. What benefit is it to, to them or to or to the town? Obviously, and there's an environmental benefit to. Well, it to used to be that if you put your land in land use or into uh, easement, they would pay you for the easement. So it would be a, a reduction in uh, or a way to generate operating capital or, or a reduction in the mortgage. There's a little bit that describes that in the letter too. It says, you know, the easement restricts non-agricultural use and future subdivision of the property. So it basically keeps it in as farmland in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Did, forestry, it says. Didn't when this started back years ago, did it have to that that was left open for fish and game and people to hunt and stuff like that? They couldn't post it. No, because it's still um, even though it's in land use, uh, the owners are still uh, responsible for the management of it. And though it doesn't sound like it, but uh, there have been several times when uh, farmers have had. Uh, put their land in easement and then uh, did a seeding and people wanted to go fishing and drove down, things like that. Pretty, I mean, it, it's very rare, but there are inconsiderate people out there. Oh. And it's more than you want to admit. But they, that's why I think, I believe, I mean, unless it's changed, you can still post. I thought, it, well, I know years ago, back up, uh, a piece of property they did. If they did that, it had to be by permission only and stuff. But I don't know. I was just curious. Maybe. Maybe. I, I can check. How that Maybe changed. Anything else? All those. So if there's no issue with this, we are. I don't have to write a letter. Thank you. Okay. Um. RFP approval acceptance for audit services. You have all those there for bid opening right. in front of you there. So they should all be labeled there, all unopened. Community service, no janitorial. Yeah, and that's the uh, decline services. That, that one's a letter of decline. You can read that one. And that's the only bid. It's one bid. It's two documents for the one bid for the audit services. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for the honor. In terms of the audit services bid, we received one from Father Gil Sigali and Valley, dated May 9, 2022. The letter reads, Dear Vince, thank you for asking us to submit a proposal to provide audit services for the Town of Berlin for the fiscal years ending June 30th, 2022, with the option of mutual renewal for subsequent fiscal years. We are unable to bid at this time. If you decide to request proposals in the future, please consider us again. Sincerely, Michael Segali, CPA, Father Gil Segali, and Valley CPAs. They have been our auditors for how long? I think the last six years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the issue, I'd actually talked to uh, one of the people there, and it's because we're going to have a single audit and they just don't have enough people mm -hmm. working there to have, uh, you know, to provide an extra person with a single audit. So uh, we only have one bid, and would you care to read that out loud? For all, all 32 pages or just yeah, the, just, just the totals? Just the, right. just, the, uh, <laughs> just the last one there. Okay, from Sullivan Powers and Company, uh, PC, Certified Public Accountants. It does appear that they're, oh, I'll read the introductory paragraph. Based on our knowledge of the accounting system and the regulations and guidelines, we have determined that the audits of financial statements can be performed for the following fees, provided that books are closed and reconciled 
and our to-do list is completed prior to our commencing field work and it looks like the total out of pocket expenses including principal senior staff clerical uh, is 28,000 even if the town requires a single audit in any year the fee will be 6,000 for one major program and 4,000 for additional major programs what were we paying um... uh, last year we paid 18,500 So that's a ten thousand dollar increase. Wow. Well, we had a single audit last year. That was the eighteen five with the single audit. So you're looking at over thirty thousand with the single audit. Thirty four thousand. So they also offer up in the proposal a um, proposed uh, increase each year for twenty twenty three, five hundred dollar increase to twenty eight thousand five hundred, and twenty twenty four, twenty nine thousand one hundred. And it looks like there's. A couple copies, if anybody would like to. Yeah, those are for the just pass them around. Glance. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the only bid we got on this. That is it. Any, any comments, the, Diane? We have to have them, and we get, I get to book them as soon as I can book them. Because yeah. we have to have a single audit by law. For, for our USDA loans, we have to. It's not, not an if we, yeah, if it's not, if we can, we have to. Our loans depend on this. And I will say, I have dealt with Sullivan and Powers for 15 years. It, where I worked before, it, they're excellent, absolutely excellent. And not that Father Bill and the Galley weren't, because they were as well, but I, I can attest to this company as well. You feel the, uh, the, additional, the additional fee rates for the next three years would be? Well, it's not like we have to do it all three years. No. Uh, we can just every year look at it. But we want to have that ability. Yeah, to have them tied in. Yeah. And from what I understand right now, there are a lot of towns that are scrambling trying to find somebody to do the audit. I don't know if the growth in our grand list is keeping up. Hmm. <coughs> um, so, <coughs> a motion on the audit services? that we accept the bid from Sullivan Powers and Company for the total $28,000 for the year 2022 for County Berlin Audit Services. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. Uh, so next is Cemetery Office Lawn. Yep. I knew somebody wanted that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> all different. Those two are. Do you have all four, Diane, or is that three? I do. Okay. Well, is that? There's three. Is that one right there, Joe? Yeah. You want to hand that? Uh, I think two of them. What I'm opening is listed for Town of Berlin Lawn Care Sealed Bid from Kirkyard Services, LLC, out of Marshfield, Vermont, 1086 Thistle Hill Road. The letter reads, we will mow and trim from May to September, municipal building at 108 Shed Road, Town Memorial, corner of Payne Turnpike North and Crosstown Road. Dog River Park, Route 12 Riverton, Friendship Park, Muzzy Road, as needed to keep the lawns maintained, raked, mowed, trimmed, and trees pruned for a clean and professional look for a total of $4,200.
We are fully insured and will submit our proof of insurance if our bid is accepted. Respectfully submitted, Joseph Mag Magnum, Kirk Garrett Services, LLC. Is that 4200 a month? That's usually yes. bids. It doesn't specify per month. It just specifies 4200 I think it's probably a season, isn't it? That's, yeah, I would it's say. From the May to September. No, I don't think so. Really? Well, we got a lot more area at the trailer park, and the bids were around 7000 so... I guess we'd have to clarify that just to make I, sure. I think so. Yeah. yeah that seems pretty high for a monthly. How is the RFP worded? Was it? I'd have to look again, but I did put a copy in the back, but I'm pretty sure it's right here. This other one that I'm holding is also from Kirkyard Services LLC, but it specifies we will mow and trim from May to September, Johnston's to Sawyer, Dewey to Wright, East Road, Black, Colby, Coxbrook, Howard. Dion. Cemeteries every other week, keeping the brush out of the confines of the cemetery, and the West Berlin Cemetery will be maintained weekly for the yearly price of $8,500. Any additional work will be by bid or by the hour at $40 per hour. We are fully insured and will submit our proof of insurance if our bid is accepted. Again, respectfully submitted, Joseph Magnum, Kirk Garrett Services, LLC. This other one here, it says roadside mowing, that's different? Mm. Oh, one of those from Kirk Yard should be for roadside mowing. The one she just read is the, is the cemeteries. That one should be for roadside. This that, is roadside. Yeah, that's another one that I don't know who that's from, but it's another roadside mowing pit. So, uh, so we'll have to open that one to determine right, for roadside. Yep. I think it's so for the cemeteries, one better. For the roadside, we've got two bidders. Okay. So a motion unless, on unless there's two bids in there. From the same company, I don't know. Forty two or forty three. Forty two. Okay. Yeah, strictly roadside. Okay. So a motion on the cemetery mowing. I make the motion to approve the cemetery mowing bid to Kirkyard with the clarification on the 4,200 quoted. Cemetery was 8,500, my mistake. That was pretty clear. 8,500, yeah. my mistake. Yeah. I'll second that. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries for Kirkyard for the cemeteries. And let's see here. Um, office lawn and highway mowing services. Mm -hmm. And that one there is for? 4200 And this is from? Donnell Dexter from Williamstown, and he will bid proposed price is fifty six hundred dollars, and he will do um, a single pass mowing on all class two and three roads, and a second pass on paved roads. And I would have to take and say you want to check and make sure it's insured. Yeah, we'll follow up. He's, he's the person that uh, currently did it last year. Well, I think the last two years. Last two years, yeah. And what was Kirk Yard's price? 4200 Hear a motion? Make a motion to uh, 
Give the roadside mowing to Kirk Garrett for 4200 And that is for the year, correct? I believe That's so. That's for the offices, huh? the town offices. Not town the town offices. Side. Yeah, Don L is the roadside. So just one that for is the... Just the Okay, okay, that's not so the roadside as well. I uh, made a mistake. So there. now we got two different things going. Yeah. Uh, let's okay. see. Here. Office lawn mowing. That's that forty-two hundred. Yeah. I'd like to clarify if that's for the season because it appears to me I would think that would be for the season, May to September. That should be. I thought he was including the roadside oh, as oh, okay. well as the cemeteries because right. he's always done the cemeteries. Oh, okay. okay sorry, so I think that's right. my issue. Yeah. Okay. But I think yeah, it's because that's like eight hundred and forty a month. Yeah. Like maybe just to reiterate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, take and clarify and uh, a motion on the office uh, lawn mowing. I'll entertain a motion for the office yard mowing for 4200 uh, after clarification. I, I, I was, I'm still. I'm still a little mixed up here. So we approve the cemeteries. This yeah. 4,200 bid, uh, bid is for the town offices and uh, Dog River Park, Friendship Park, Town Memorial Corner only, yep. without really sign. Yep. Okay. So, so moved. <laughs> there you I go. I was going to say that okay. too, but <laughs> second. <laughs> Uh, do we hear a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And now for roadside mowing. We have a roadside bid proposal for roadside mowing. It is from Donnell Dexter, 1188 Baptist Street, Williamstown, Vermont, 05679. Dear Sir, I'm writing to submit a bid for the 2022 roadside mowing season. The proposed bid for single pass mowing of all class two and three roads and a second pass on paved roads. The bid proposal price is $5,600 even. The mowing in question is scheduled to be performed using a John Deere 2555 90 horsepower tractor equipped with a five foot boom mower. I would assume, as with other towns, a 30-day contract term for acceptance of bid. I would like to thank you for your time and consideration of my bid proposal. It was dated May 13, 2022. Hear a motion on roadside mowing? Just the one. I make the motion to approve the singular bid um, tonight from Donnell Dexter for the bid proposal price of $5,600. Your second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And we are through the bid acceptance procedure now. Um, Music permit was uh, withdrawn. Discussion with tree warden Dave Wilcox. How's it going? Good. How are you? Oh, pretty good. <clears throat> Want to come closer to a microphone? Hi. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Welcome to our new tree warden, by the way. Yes, yeah. first first appearance. So. Yep. The power went out the last time I tried to. <laughs> Tree took the lines down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tree on private land. Though. How <laughs> ironic. Uh, yeah, so not sure exactly what the previous, I, I knew the previous tree warden, Beth Doubt, worked with her a little bit on the ash tree survey. Um, I do have that, that data. Um, Maybe I'll back up a little bit um, and introduce myself. Uh, I, I've been a forester for 25 years, almost just about 25 years with the state of Vermont. Um, I managed state lands uh, for 19 years and now I'm the watershed forester with the department. 
so I do a lot of work with logging contractors and foresters training. Most of my job is water quality, um, but also the, the other um, regulatory aspect of forest and parks, which is the heavy cut law. So, um, and when I was a state lands forester for many years, I worked with towns doing tree warden training, worked with a lot of communities on tree planting. I've had quite a bit of uh, experience with the Berlin Elementary School. My two daughters that went there planted um, a lot of trees around the school. Uh, I just actually came from there. The apple trees look really good. There's an elm tree that's dead. Uh, supposedly it was given to us by Walmart, I believe, years ago. And it was supposed to be disease resistant, which <laughs> it's it's uh, warranty ran out, so uh, that's probably the first order of business is to get that completely dead elm tree grid gone, which is right between the school park driveway and the fire station. You can't miss it. Um, I mow around it all the time. Uh, so yeah, so I, I I feel like I have a lot of. Uh, experience and and uh, I live on in Riverton uh, on McCarty Road at the old I call it the old Bouchard farm most people will recognize that name but um, yeah happy happy to to be able to to help and I, I don't know what exactly the the tree warden uh, job entails for the town of Berlin I think every town is a little bit different I know the, the guys on the, the road crew um, and there has been a, a new tree warden statute that was, uh, the, the, the old tree warden statute changed a year or two ago. Um, and, and it's clarified that the tree warden has um, responsibility for trees that are planted by the town on public property. It does not include all shade trees like it did um, un unless the town well, and the alternative is the town um, create a tree ordinance that describes better than just saying all shade trees because a, a, a seedling that's tall creates shade, <laughs> just like a giant maple tree. So the tri the tri a lot of towns have chosen to create their own town ordinance which describes those trees that are under the purview of the tree work. So, but without an ordinance like that, it goes to the state ordinance, or the, I'm sorry, the state statute which says the tree warden is responsible for trees in the public right of way that were planted by the town. Not all trees in the public way, just those that were planted. So uh, I think if, if you were to ask me what the, what the uh, biggest issue is relative to the trees in the town of Berlin, I would clearly say ML dashboard. We're going to see uh, widespread mortality of ash trees. It could be as close as two years away, it could be six years away, it's probably somewhere in the middle, but when it hits it's going to be stark and surprising. Yes, Even though we've been hearing about it, it, it when it happens it, it's, uh, it's an impact. Has there been any, uh, any uh effort or any uh, progress made in any kind of control? So th there's no way to control the insect in terms of uh, eradicating it, like spraying for it. Yeah. Uh, the only real uh, way to combat EAB is you can treat tree, single trees. Um, the best thing to do is before it's infested, you know, when, when you see the the, the insect getting closer, start to treat it um, with a with a systemic insecticide that or pesticide that when when the insect bores into the tree it doesn't doesn't like it kills it and then the tree doesn't have as much damage because what it is is the the insect lays its eggs the larva feed into the tree they make the galleries they kill the cambium in that area it overwinters and then in about almost this time of year, the adult pupates into an adult and it chews its way out and flies away and goes and lays more eggs. And so it's that gallery creation and the cambium damage that when you get enough of those, they coalesce around the tree and the tree dies. Yep. So they start by, by 
the top down. Um, you see the insects in the top of the tree, and you see some flagging and tree branches dying and, and leaves defoliation, and then you see the woodpeckers getting after the insects and they start pulling the bark off. And then pretty soon it's the tree is just can't keep up. Yeah. Um, Are they exclusive to ash? Yes. Why? So uh, all species else? of ash, but mm -hmm. but only ash. So white ash, um, which are native ash trees, green ash, which is a very common ornamental tree, and then black and brown ash, which are native but live mostly in in wet areas, um, and and those are all they're all susceptible. But it doesn't go over to maple or other things. So. Well, I know some some towns have gone out and done surveys on the roadside, mm -hmm. um, and then your travels from here to home. Are you seeing a need for that? Well, Berlin actually uh, has had a, a comprehensive, pretty comprehensive ash tree survey that Beth Doubt um, initiated with the. the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, who I work for, They're, they have a program that is the Urban and Community Forestry Program that helps communities in all sorts of aspects of urban forestry. You know, it could be anything from a, a helping a town with a town forest or recreation on a town forest to tiny little pocket parks to tree planting at a school and, and the right tree in the right place. And for years, we had a grants program where we would help communities plant trees. That's the, the apple trees at the school were planted through a grant through the UCF program. Um, and so they have, they actually have an ash tree inventory uh, app that you get on your phone. And I helped Beth with a couple other folks from Forest and Parks. And we inventoried a lot of the roads. Um, so I would say we have 75 to 80 percent of the roads already surveyed. For, EA, for ash trees, not EAB, just just ash trees in it. Um, and and the, the power company who I've spoken to, they left the they left the door hanger for yeah. me, and I and I talked to the fella. But they've taken down a lot of trees along the power lines. I mean, everybody's seen that, and they're they're trying to be proactive because once EAB hits, it's 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 like a s s storm. You know, it's worse than a storm. Uh, so, because the trees get brittle and, and they could fall any time, you know, a little bit of wind can cause a whole lot of problems. So, they're trying to get rid of the, the trees. And, and I think um, it, it depends on how, you know, everything costs money. You know, how do you, how do you proactively reduce the ash component without, um, you know, spending all your resources on it? Uh, and I think uh, we're, we're very lucky. GMP has, in my opinion, done a great job of trying to be proactive. Um, what, because about, what about Washington Electric? I, I don't know much about Washington Electric, to be honest with you. I, I can certainly find out. I, I, um, a lot of their lines are, are through the woods. They don't have as many roadside lines. And that's a big issue. Yeah. Um, in, in many ways, not just EAB, but um, when they, the, all the rope, the power lines strung up, side, up along West Hill Road were I probably put in, in the 40s and they went through the fields and now it's all woods. So they're off-road lines that zigzag nowhere near the road and the guys have a bunch of trouble trying to maintain them. Um, so, yeah, to the extent that um, that's, in my opinion, the biggest issue. I'm happy to uh, try to work towards making it as as, as uh, small an impact as possible. But it's it is going to be an impact. There's going to be, you know. And then when when the, the trees come down, what do you do with the wood? And Vermont is is pretty much accepted the fact that EAB is is going to be everywhere soon. We were lucky. It stayed away for well. We, we didn't find it for a long, long time, and now that we found it, it's the, the, the areas where it is infested is, is getting much bigger very quickly. And instead of trying to regulate the insect, um, we're just trying to slow the spread and, and make people aware of 
of what's going to happen. I've been, you know, as a, as a forester and owning my own land, um, I've been proactively trying to reduce the ash component just because if I'm there and I can get it, I'm going to take it now and kind of pre-salvage type of thing. Um, I don't cut all of them, but um, I really, you know, it's not going to be too long before we see a lot of dead ash trees. What's the percent of ash in a forest? They say it's about 5%, to 5 to 8% maybe, but that might be an average. You know, there's yeah, areas know. where it's 20%. There's areas where it's 1%. You know, ash likes good sites. Um, it grows along the sugar maple and um, yellow birch and basswood on, on really good sites, and, and it loves hedgerows. All along our fields up there is just ash trees. So, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, happy to, I know all the players with the state and um, when the time comes or however we decide or select board decides to approach it, happy to, you know, lead that, lead that charge. So, okay. but it is going to be a bummer. So based off of what sur survey you do have, mm -hmm. um, how many of those trees are probably in, in town right away and how many are I guess maybe not currently infected well we the, the survey used the right away distance to determine if the tree was in or out of the right away so we only surveyed trees that were in the right away okay. we actually measured from center line um, to the tree and if it was outside of the I think we used 25 feet, which is pretty much 50 foot right away, 25 feet from the center line. If it was farther than that, we didn't count it. The, there's a lot that are close to being in, but we didn't count them. And at the time we did it, there were no infested trees. Um, and I, I should know this, but honestly I don't. If if there are any infested trees in the town of Berlin right now, I don't, I don't know. I know there are in Montpelier. And I know there are in like Plainfield and East Montpelier. Um, I don't know of any in Northfield. Williamstown. Williamstown yeah. there are. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because the closest infestation or the, the start of the infestation that we knew about, the first EAB uh, infected tree that was found in Vermont was found in Plainfield, just uh, on, the, on the Groton Mountain Range, either side of the Groton Mountain Range, just, just north east of Plainfield, and uh, the insect flies theoretically two miles a year, so you can make a, a ring every two years, but it mo mostly moves 55 miles an hour in the back of the pickup truck, is how it gets from place to place. People have a tree that falls down, they, they don't know, they cut it up, they put it in their truck, they take it camping, and the insect climbs out and finds a whole bunch of more trees. That's how it got from... Michigan East. Most Ash is a, a hardwood, right? So oh yeah. yeah yep. So it's not even it's good a, for camping. You like your nice dry oh, pine, right? A little snap, <laughs> a little yeah. Uh, but no, it's a, it's it's not a bad firewood. It's not as dense as, as sugar maple or anything. But it's it's uh, it's a great it's a it's a commercial species. It's great for mm -hmm. for lumber and the price of ash. Believe it or not, in the last ten years, the price of ash has not dropped. It's only gone up because it just Maybe it, it hit on. the it hit the the market so that people are demanding it as the the uh, amount of it went up. So it's luckily stayed um, high price for ash. Um, so that's one of the few positive things that are you can find out in the <laughs> timber in industry right now. Not the price of fuel, but the price of of delivered logs is pretty good. I think East Swamp Pier actually has an active cutting program right now on their roadways because we're doing a project over there and they're taking everything within that 25 feet. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, some towns, um, I mean, roadside management, uh, absent of EAB, is still important. You know, there's still hazard trees and uh, trees that die and, and create risk for the town. That's a whole other thing. It doesn't have to be EAB that creates the risk. It can be 
all sorts of things. Um, there are dead dead trees along the roadside that that create a, a liability for the town. Have you looked at uh, since ash grows more than sixty feet? Have you looked at uh, anything back from the right of ways? No, the. Um, yeah, uh, you. No, we have. I, I guess I'm just trying to think. I mean, if a if a tree were to fall and it's out of the right of way, it can still reach the road. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And the town. The the town has the ability to 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 cut trees that are over that right of way, but until they are, yeah. it's the landowner's responsibility. And that's just, you know, it's every time you walk in the woods, there's a danger. Yeah. So, uh, from a very practical financial level, would there be a value for a, a timber, lumber, or firewood harvester uh, to, uh, to harvest our right of way trees in town? And would that be a cost to the town, or would them just being able to keep what they harvested be worth it for them? In, in some towns, I know I know Limlaw, uh, Clearing and Pulpwood and Topsom has done roadside tree removal at, at a wash for the town for towns in selected areas, and because of the state statute, the trees belong to the landowner, so they have to offer the trees, even though Limlaw cuts them, they have to offer those trees to the landowner, but they. Um, they give them like two weeks, and if it's not gone, they, they just chip it or, or process it. But most of them, most of the roadside trees, because of the sunlight, they have limbs that, you know, they're not great log quality trees because right. of the openness. Um, so a lot of them just get chipped or, or processed into like firewood or pulp or, you know, lower quality but higher than chips. Um, and, that, and they should be. That should go to the highest and best use, not just chip. So. It would be, I would say, um, it would be a cost in, in many places. Um, Out of curiosity here, how does the bug like going through the chipper? <laughs> no, so the, it doesn't like it, uh, I, I would assume. But the, the idea is if you chip the wood to smaller than, um, I think it's two inches by two inches, and, and they're, never, they're never that thick. It's, it's yeah. like a matchbook size, they say. Um, that dries the wood out and renders that fiber uh, clean of, of the insect. So when you harvest a tree, um, during the, the, the flight season for the insect, there's, there was, not so much anymore because the AB is already everywhere, but when we tried to s keep it from spreading, there were rules where you couldn't ship logs during a certain period of time or you could only ship it to an area that was infested. Um, and, and all of the waste had to be treated, like either either kiln dried or chipped. So chipping is one of the ways to get rid of the insect or, or, or make the forest product safe, yeah. so to speak. So well, I was just wondering, uh, you were saying uh, processing it into firewood, and then the only trouble with that, I saw, was it would be shipped around. Right, right. And, and some towns have created like a, like a wood yard where all the ash trees go to that yard and, and and maybe the town hired a processor and sold the wood or gave the wood away to income eligible people. I mean, there's all sorts of different ways to do that, but the idea is to do it as close to the stump as possible so that material is not spreading the, the insect, which is, you know, it's logistics and um, where do you put the wood yard? And I, I was going to make a map of the of the um, trees that have already been, or the roads that have already been inventory, but I I wasn't able to do that today. Um, but I, I will uh, uh, I can pro I can produce that, and if you want more information on it, I'd be happy to to do that either through email or you know whatever. People maybe something on the town website to, yeah. that everybody could look at. Yeah. Not just mm -hmm. yeah. maybe ideas outside the select board might mm -hmm. be better. Anything else, Dave? 
No, no, I, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, so when I, when I worked with tree wardens, uh, when, when I uh, was a state lands forester and was the urban and community forester, that was my title, so to speak, uh, when, I, when I did this sort of thing, we talked a lot about hazard trees. And, and obviously EAB is a great creator of, going to be a creator of hazard trees, but there are others out there. And I didn't know, some towns, the tree warden works with the road crew and identifies trees that should come down. I know some road crews, they don't get rid of them until they hit the road. Uh, but they're, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to be a, proactive on those trees that are the most hazardous and, and dead trees especially um, because there really isn't any justification for keeping a, a dead tree around on a, on a busy road. Um, so I didn't know if if the that how that was treated before in, in Berlin. Um, maybe it was the, the road foreman I think every Did time I don't was, really know. I think that every time there was a tree that were in question, they get a hold of the tree ward and they go out and inspect. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to be if you want to be proactive. <coughs> if you want to go out with Tim for a couple of rides around and mm -hmm. discuss it. Well, it's I think it's worth chatting with him, and I know Tim pretty well. I think he does. I honestly think he does a great job as our road foreman. I. I don't have any complaints. Uh, <laughs> I live on the end of a dead end road, so I'm the, you're never going to hear me complain. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I would be interested in chatting with them. I, I mean, I also realize it, it's a make work project for the road for me and the road crew. Um, and but I think there's a there's a there's a compromise of not certainly not going to go out and mark a bunch of hazard trees because that just is a is a you know. A liability flag, yeah. but but seeing the most obvious ones and uh, approaching those and seeing if that's too much, or, you know, they could do more. I think Tim would uh, look forward to some of that. To be quite frank, he, he doesn't appreciate the two a.m. callouts for trees across the road. <laughs> and as, it would, it much. would, and I, I think if we could, you know, convince him it's going to cut down on that, mm -hmm. I think he'd be all for it. I think <laughs> it will definitely. Um, well, so you couple that with like ditching. A ditching project. Um, you're there in the area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm, very proactive. Yep. But yeah, that's that's all I could uh, would have, and um, and says my contact info. So if anybody has questions, let me know. Anything else for Dave? Well, is here. Thanks. We're lucky to have somebody with your experience and knowledge. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad to be able to help. And um, yeah. Now that everybody knows you, the questions will start coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we got I, I've been fortunate in 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 my career. Uh, I, I I love what I do, and uh, I, I do it on the weekends at my own place. So I I'm happy to share my interest and experience. So I know the conservation commission is listening in, and they're pretty happy to have the <coughs> you as well. They'll, I'm sure they're going to come forward with some questions yep. about managing the town forest and yep. and the uh, Emerald Dash border too, with what the next steps might be for that. So yeah, the, that's the, going to come. The uh, Berlin Town Forest <laughs> has a really nice uh, site and has a lot of ash trees. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. okay, All thank right. you very much, Dave. Yep. Have a good thank, you. Well. thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay, um, town clerk and assistant clerk discussion, or decision, I should say. Uh, so, this is a follow-on from the, yep. uh, the previous meeting, right? Uh, this is to uh, try to make a decision on uh, what we want to do for the uh, soon-to-be vacant town clerk's position, uh, and uh, how we want to proceed or not proceed. Uh, with regards to that. And currently the town clerk's job duties is also assistant treasurer. And you're looking to drop that as well. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so right now, the the, the what's before us is to either appoint or have the assistant town clerk move into the town clerk's position. That, that would be one of the, one of the options, right? Do we want to have the assistant town clerk effective July 1st uh, move into that role until the next election in March? So you're going to be appointing the assistant as I'm not, but you offer. Well, we would offer. <laughs> we would offer the assistant town clerk, right? The, okay. The option, right? right. Okay. And, and then along with that, obviously, right? They'll they'll want to be a you know salary discussion. Is it going to remain the same, or is it going to be something different? Um, all those things need to be decided on how we want to proceed with that. Since and then. Just to, to complicate it a little bit more. Oh, do me. Okay. Um, another decision that will need to be taken is um, do we uh, authorize the appointed position to backfill the assistant position as well going forward until the election? So those are all the things that uh, really need to be decided. Well, I would have to, uh, my thoughts only, but my thoughts would be to take in, uh, 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 would be to take and move uh, the assistant into the town clerk's position. The voters pay, uh, had, had, uh, had already um, appropriated the money. The... Then the if on the assistant side that money has already been appropriated also, though it's really not up to the board to decide how that those funds are distributed within the town clerk's office. Um, and then take in uh, hopefully we can get through to March. Then we can. They can, if the town clerk or the acting town clerk wants to run again, fine and dandy. If not. So the assistant town clerk, the money that was uh, voted on for the assistant town clerk, mm -hmm. you're saying could be, you could increase the hourly rate but decrease the hours needed to make that. Uh, Again, by state statute, right. we we don't have anything right. to do with that. Okay. So. so there's a lot. Let me just understand this, and I and I think I kind of would like to hear from Corinne on what her expectations are. If we were to uh, appoint her as the town clerk, what her expectations would be? I think that'd be very helpful uh, going forward. There's a certain amount of money that my understanding is it's allotted to that. Thing. Some of it is for the town clerk, some is for the assistant. Last time Karen was here, she voiced, and to me, if I understand it correctly, voiced that uh, bringing somebody on as assistant and a livable wage. Uh, so I guess I would like to hear from Karen of what her thoughts and what she thinks things will, that she thinks that things would look like if she was to accept an appointment from the board. I'd like to piggyback onto that if we're going to turn it over and ask what what do you see the anticipated office open out office hours being identical to now uh, so just again it's not it's just a question at, at this point but was that a question to me that, 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 it was for me it, it was it was for me yeah. that's what I yeah. <laughs> what I would like to um what Carl just asked, as far as the public hours, I, I really don't know at the moment um, until, until you actually have it staffed with two people. I certainly couldn't say it would stay exactly the same because if I didn't get a second person 
um, in there right away. I don't know that I could do that. Do you foresee? I, I just don't know. Do you foresee that, that you have an individual that may be in line for that position? I did talk to somebody during my vacation okay. and and all, but you know, everybody's looking at this as a as a big unknown. As I mentioned at the last meeting, if you weren't able to say that um, the person you appointed would get the line item as approved by the voters for the town clerk, you certainly weren't able to say that as far as the assistant town clerk either. And if you don't know how much you can you can say somebody will make, it's really hard to get them to become interested. I understand that. And here's here's kind of my thoughts, and I just I wanted to understand what you were thinking, is if this a line item that was voted on by the voters, if you were to increase to that amount as a town clerk, you would express having somebody come on at a wage that maybe you're currently making, that that may not be enough for that individual. Oh, so well, I can't I can't say for sure, but what I said was I felt it needed to be at least what was there on the line item. I mean, and you can't for both can't, positions, right? I mean, okay. Uh, I know it would be unfair during the middle of a of a budget season to ask for any increases, but you know, budget season to discuss next year is around the corner and I think that's certainly something that needs to be looked at and I, I was I was here during budget season last time and expressed my views not just for the clerk's office but for everybody that works for the town that everybody should be making a livable wage okay so I guess yeah. my question to you is 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 the line item that has been approved by the voters mm -hmm. if you were offered that position do you foresee that you would take that position and do you foresee that the amount that was line item for the assistant that you would be able to fill that assistant position for that line item number mm -hmm. I did that's the question I had well anything not at this moment I might add as we go forward well, I don't think we're going to go forward too much for this. Is a decision one. <laughs> right. We got to get a decision. So, I, I'll throw my opinion out. Is uh, um, I think we need to get the work done. There's uh, it's an election year. Uh, we have an experienced assistant clerk that's willing to step in at the current town clerk's voted upon salary. Uh, discussion on that would really probably lead to. Um, potential hard feelings uh, and potential um, issues with our town attorneys, which we are probably better off not dealing with with only 20 days. And I can, I, I mean, I, I spoke to Rosemary and, and I was concerned just to be respectful to her and, and she was totally fine with her successor receiving the voted upon uh, town clerk's, current town clerk's amount. So um, I'm kind of urging that we do offer Corinne the position at, the, at Rosemary's current salary uh, and, and move forward with this. Uh, and as far as in the parens, which we haven't talked about, dropping the assistant treasurer, I would, I would prefer to, to table that uh, to another meeting and just discuss that and not decide that, I guess, because we're not quite sure who it would be. Right at this point, that's a question. I, I, my only comment to that is we we have the job posted and we're, we're okay. in, interviewing candidates okay. for the assistant position as as we get them. Obviously, uh, yeah, I could be line. wrong, but I thought that Rosemary being appointed as the assistant town clerk was something that she specifically was appointed to do. Be able to sign checks and stuff, right? It, yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't become part of the town clerk's job. It was Rosemary was specifically appointed as the assistant treasurer to co-sign checks. As I say, I'm not 100 percent positive about that. Um, but something else I'd like to add, just since you're having this discussion, is that when 
when the clerk's salary was was righted a little bit a budget or two ago. Part of that came from it was pointed out that in the news that the Barrytown clerk was retiring, and that the um, Barry Select Board had decided that, that a new town clerk would make at least fifty-five thousand dollars, even without experience. I mean, specific assistant town clerk or town clerk experience. And the person that they hired did not have any clerk or assistant town clerk experience and started out at 57.5 and then got an annual increase that put her up to 60,000. Of note, she is working sometimes 70 hours a week because without the experience and all, there is a lot to do. You know, and so even though I've been here for eight years and there's a lot that I do do, there is certainly going to be a learning curve on some things and so I would not be surprised if I'm spending more than 40 hours a week. So please keep that in mind as you're deciding this, that it's, it's, you know, it's no longer an hourly thing where I'm going to be beat feeding out the door. It's like there is a job to do and it needs to be done. You know, and I feel that you're very capable and the, the right individual to have in that position. My only hopes, it, it, it being on this board, and I've, I've got this thing that, that I'm going to say, I just kind of hope <coughs> that you work with the current select board and them that this cloud that seems to be hung over the, 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 the clerk's office and the select board, if there was bad blood, that somehow we get that put aside and hopefully go forward in a constructive way. Uh, and I don't care where it started. I really don't. I mean, we're a new board. We really want to just go forward and not have that, that uh, um, I don't know, kind of looking over the shoulder or what's being said or anything of that. We just want to deal with you in a professional manner and move forward. The question I have, Vince, is can we – until the position is vacant, we can't appoint, can we? Right. You have you have ten days from the date of the vacancy to appoint. Well, fortunately, the next day is Monday, the first of July. Actually, it's Friday. July first is a Friday. Was it? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. July first is a Friday. Can we uh, vote? In June. Can we vote to render a conditional offer? upon the current town clerk's uh, resignate, official resignation and departure? Sure. Um, yeah. It'll work. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a motion first. All right. <laughs> I, I make a motion that we offer our current assistant town clerk uh, the position of town clerk as of the um, resignation and vacation of the office by the current town clerk at the current town clerk's voted upon salary. Could something perhaps be added to that and that the assistant town clerk would receive the, the line, line item? item. Okay. Have it all yeah, as long as I don't have to say it again? Absolutely. <laughs> so, I'll, <laughs> sec I'll second that. I think I just need to clarify something that when we did um, do the um, budget that was not in the budget okay after the budget was approved is when they increased it to the 55,000 no that was the year before in this budget FY 22 yeah the one you're looking at right For now the one that starts on July 1st okay you're talking July 1st of 2023 yes, because okay, no, gotcha. nothing would start okay. until July yep. 1st until July 1st it's on okay. right okay. Yep. Here a second. I'll second that. With the addition. With the addition, as stated. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So then, could I ask for clarification as far as what that means, as far as how that motion? Was well, worded as far basically, as you take over Rosemary's job at her salary, and then you can appoint an assistant at your old salary. 
No, or but only. what I mean as far as how it works time-wise, as far as when Rosemary gets done on June 30th, that means that the motion just made takes effect, and so it starts as of July 1st. Correct. And so as of July 1st, I would be able to go ahead and appoint yep. an assistant. Right? That's the clarification yep. I need. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? No, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, treasurer's treasurer request. Yes. The treasurer's request. No, treasure. Oh, yes. treasure. Okay, a little typo there with my. <laughs> Diane is our treasurer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> request treasurer for request. co signer for checks to be appointed, approved by the board. Right now, Rosemary co signs the checks over $5,000 for me. I need to remove her name and put somebody else's name, somebody else's name with the bank. <laughs> and it might make the most sense to have Vince in the interim. Yeah, he's in the office all the time. Most of the time. I make yeah. the motion to um, appoint Vince Conti to be the co-signer on the checks above $5,000. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Vince, GMT update, yeah. questions for discussion? So there's a little paper in there, right? Um, the appraisal study is basically completed. Our site, uh, this is the update I got from them uh, on the 19th of May, mid-May, was uh, $115,000 lower for our site versus the competing site down the road. So it was better. Um, but they have a big concern over the access the challenges for the access, right? Um, Maplewood, as we as we heard, you know, months ago, may not have any interest in allowing a shared UDAC access to be put in over there um, due to the previous Act 250 issues that they had. They haven't given up on that yet, so I'll come back to that. Um, the estimated cost that they have to develop an access at Maplewood is about $350,000. The question that they have for the town with regards to that is they would like to know if the town would be willing to cost share in that 350000 if it goes that way. So that's the first question. Um, the other concern, if they stay with the existing access on Crosstown, uh, do they need to improve that access to accommodate the two homes at the entrance? Um, and is there any other concerns that the board sees that need to be addressed for the use of that entrance? What is their estimated uh, trip? They're, they're looking at roughly 35 to 40 buses out in the morning before probably around 6 a.m. And then back in, obviously the same amount, uh, after 5 p.m. That's these their initial are, estimate. Are those staggered or is it one mass it's, it's pretty much one one after the other in the morning and the same thing well it's it's more staggered coming in in the evening yeah um, is their estimate but it's it's what's their time of service do you do you know when they, when they mobilize know in the their, morning no they, they, they expect the most the majority like Certainly i said 35 to 40 to be out of five out of here by uh by no later than 6 a.m okay. and then in after 5 p.m Mm -hmm. It's running until almost 8.39. Yeah, sure. Place. What are we talking about? Green Mountain Transit? Yep. GMT. There isn't going to be a bus, de uh, bus stop there. When am I that's to just their maintenance. That's, that's oh. just their garage okay. shop. The, what they have over on Route 12 now yeah. would be that year. Well, and a lot of their, their, their routes are let's say short routes that might only be an hour and a half or two and a half so you have that through the day as well you'll have some through through the day I don't have a good estimate from on that yet and there would have to be an agreement with Maplewood to develop a access through there anyways right. so they're, they're do looking you, at having further discussions with Maplewood but they don't have my hopes I don't feel that's gonna go anywhere so. <laughs> personally but uh, just huh. saying, if you want why don't you come up and sit in uh, the chair of your events and join the party a little piece of this. There so you go. There's one other question. So there's three questions in total that the GMT would like me to get back to after the meeting with the board. And that is, um, 
does the town expect or desire a pilot payment for this property as well? So those are the three questions. Again, I'll just briefly, would we willing to cost share if they get, get the approval to put in a $350,000 access through Maplewood? Would the town be willing to cost share? Um, do they need to do any improvements to the access um, here on Crosstown where the two homes are at the end of the road? Um, fencing, uh, you know, uh, landscaping to kill some of the noise, calm some of the noise, whatever, uh, those type of things. Uh, and there, are there any other concerns um, for that that they should be addressing as well? If, if that's the access that they have to use, should we be the selected site? And um, do we expect any pilot payments? So those are the three three questions that I need to get back to them on for them to move forward towards a final decision. So I remember sitting in on one of the meetings where they had the proposal of the access coming through Maplewood. Yep. Um, and I know they did talk briefly about Shed Road. Yep. Did any of the town uh, residents, the property owners down here, go to any of those meetings? The ones that they're talking about, you know, fencing or whatever. I don't think so. I don't think they were in either of the you meetings know, that we so. GMT. One of them's here tonight. Huh? All right. <laughs> well. Wow. What was your question? Well, my question Whether is... Whether we had opposed it? Have you, did you oppose it? I don't know how these meetings are run, so I don't want to speak Answer. out of turn. But if I'm allowed... To, so my name is Tim Bingham. I own the house on the right. Okay. And I've owned it for six years, and I've spoken to the previous board, written to the previous board, and I don't know all you guys... And Vince, and I'm actually shaking from what I'm hearing about this GMT proposal. I'm literally shaking. Because for six years, I've been dealing with these commercial vehicles that stage their equipment. Winterset's been here for three years. They told me to be out in two. And tonight I pull up and there's a bunch of massive equipment out there. My point is there's an industrial park up the street. Any of these people can go up there and rent from a variety of those businesses. The state has property up there they're not even using. The argument I've heard in the past is, oh, well, so-and-so striping company is doing work for Berlin, or the winter set was doing work on the interstate in Berlin. Well, that's all well and good, but this is a residential historic community, and every vehicle that comes in here has to go out. I, mean, I heard about the buses. Don't forget about the personal vehicles of all those people. they got to come in, get in a bus, leave, come back once or twice, leave, leave. Guys, there's just way too much traffic on my little street. You know, I want to have the ability to go out in the summer and do my gardening or work on my cars without being inundated with the dust storm and the truck noise. We've already got so much traffic coming in and out of my little road. If any of you want to come by in August, I'll call you when the tractor trailers are coming in with the gravel. They shake my house, literally. They come within 12 feet of my desk chair. This is not a commercial road. You know, what's Green Mountain thinking? Or what is, and I just want to see if we could come up with a policy, maybe put Green Mountain aside. But as far as these other folks, these commercial entities that come in here and they get free rent. But, you know, that's all well and good, but they're going in and out. Well, that's the type of business that should be in the industrial park. You know, it does not belong here. Winterset, for example, I looked up their contract, they were paid $34,000 to stage these two offices here. And they've paid the town of Berlin zero. So they're not even getting any rent. And guys, I've been dealing with this for six years and I just keep hoping that the summer, like now, that it's going to end. But I see all these tractor trailers out here with asphalt equipment. We've got uh, a tree company doing work for Green Mountain Power. Winterset is here. Oh, and there was people here for street sweeping and stuff, but this is not the industrial park. And I don't know why we're giving free rent. And free. The rent is not even the issue for me. It's, I live here, and I got to deal with all this extra traffic. And I'm in a, I'm in a historic home in Berlin Corners, residential district. Please, and now the buses? What, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? 
we're going to bring buses in and out of my schools? No way. No way. If I had known this tonight, I'd be over here with every one of my neighbors I can find. And guys, if you want to put an access in over there, we've talked about that for years. You know, we thought that the police could go in and out that way, and even our town trucks could go in and out that way. That would be awesome. This little corner down here, this little street, I mean, we just, it just gets so much traffic. Um, please, there's room in the industrial park. There's businesses down on Airport Road that have big parking lots. If any one of these people, they could go in there, talk to the owner, pay them a little rent. They don't belong on our town property in this community, guys. That's, please, help me. I'm shaking. I don't want to deal with this another summer. I mean, all winter they come and go too, of course, but summer is what I want to be outside. The windows are open, and I've got dust storms and noise. So thank you for listening, and I'd like to know, maybe it's not tonight, but at some future point, if we have a policy in place as far as those that come to us and want free rent uh, or to stage some things here. But if that happens, it's got to be a really brief period of time, like a week or less. You know, just because they're doing painting lines for the town of Berlin doesn't allow them free rent over here. We pay them, they deal with their own equipment however they want to. We don't have to give free parking. Thank you for listening to me. And I literally am shaking here in this green mountain transit thing. Because I thought it was over. We had heard about it a few months ago. I thought that got killed. Oh, God, so now I'm shaking. I, I don't want more. Thank you. Brad, although Tim didn't specifically say it, his house is the only house in Berlin that's truly designated as a historic home. Yeah. It's it's his house and Lover's Lane Bridge. Those are the only two things that have historic, I don't know what it's called, designation yeah. in their town. It's on the National Historic Registry. You yeah. can speak the words Chauncey B. Leonard House into your Google and it'll yeah. show you pictures of my house and the write up. I didn't do it, but it's kind of cool. It, it is cool. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Please consider these issues very carefully because we are affected. My neighbor has three boys. Their driveway is kind of a little up. And it's not without, it's pretty common for those balls to be kind of rolling across to my house and, you know, stuff like that, of course. But uh, more, anyway, Cross Town Road has turned into an 80 mile an hour freeway at times, going blazing right past my house because I'm at the bottom of two hills, you know. So that's another issue, but we do have, we as the community have control of our land. We don't have to, oh, you're painting lines for us? Oh, please, go use our property, use our bathrooms, use our water. More truck guns. Thanks for listening. Yep. Thank um, you. So on this, Vince, um, what was it that they were going to do? Green Mountain Transit? What, what, are they gonna, what are they proposing to do here? Yeah. Move their facility from Route 12 to where the town garage sits, and then um, move, relocate, or replace our town garage uh, closer to this building, reorient it and move it, um, and then build their new facility right here. One of my questions is going to be, have, have we talked to the neighbors? So I'm glad you came in yeah. uh, at the end of the road. I didn't know who you were, actually, until, until just now. So uh, as far as the questions you asked, I would say I wouldn't feel comfortable um, having the buses here unless there was an alternative uh, access. And I wouldn't feel comfortable helping pay for it <laughs> unless it was going to the town was going to get that money back within a certain time period, if it was going to become profitable for the town to to have that, that access. That they basically, built. were offering it was a new town garage. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a new facility. Yeah, new facility. Yeah. So we could still get the new facility if we can take and get that. If we could take and get the uh, access through Maplewood. Maplewood. And that's what I was just going to say. That's the only way that I would be in favor of it is an access. I, I know the state coming. was approached for access the other way. Out the other way, and they basically said no uh, to GMT on that, and they told them not to come back and ask again. Um, but How about the uh, the um, seems crazy. 
Hilltop, or, or not Hilltop, but the, yeah. what's the hotel? Comfort in Comfort Inn. The Comfort Inn is, has a separate owner now, a different owner, right? Is there an access potential uh, from I the Comfort Inn parking I'm, lot? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what the potential is for that, based on where the Maplewood lines are and, and the Act 250 yeah. stuff. I think we'd have, to, we'd have to look at that. I think there's always opportunity for further discussion and different ways of looking at it. Since Route 62 is a limited access highway, am I correct in that one? I believe you are, yeah. If the town were to request access to it instead of GMTA, Route 62 would have to be closer to the interstate from the, the fire department intersection access. That's a divided highway there, isn't it? So, uh, it's well, they have an access onto it from the state from parking the state. garage. Yeah, right. exactly. Just, I mean, pay, uh, parking lot. Correct. <laughs> and then they would have one way in and one way out. They'd so have you'd to have to exit. come on the exactly. interstate to get into to get the, in the lot. Into so the lot. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Yeah. What would you what is that? Uh, no. Not even 100 yards from 60 mile an hour off ramp. No. Correct. You know? Not a doable scenario. Well, that there's always been troubles with that speed coming off the throughway. Are we are we conjecturing, or is that truthful what the state would say? Well, I what what GMT said that they they've approached them twice mm -hmm. on that, and the second time they said don't come back and ask again. The answer is no, and it will always be no for, well, for additional access on there. Was that for one way access, or was that for access to go left and to go right? Out of no, it was a one, it was a one way one in, way. one way out. Oh. Yeah. You see, GMTA is, uh, even though it's public, is still a, is is not a, a municipal. Right. I'm just trying to think how we can still get that garage, get the new garage. Yeah. Yeah. We got got any any uh, leverage with Maplewood to open the discussions up. Um, you know that that would be a a real good alternative for everybody. I mean, even even for the town trucks, right? They can just swing in, fuel up, yep. and they're on the road. Um, yep. And the police as well. I mean, it'd be great. And where's the other place you were, they were looking at? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't ask the detail. It's, it's down near the state police barracks, somewhere in that vicinity, I believe. Is GMTA... Are they uh, um, tax exempt? Property tax exempt? Uh, I, I believe they are. I think they're, they're, they're a state. Knowledge that's why they're asking if we would be expecting a pilot payment from them. Hell yeah. <laughs> There's an empty state of Vermont property right up there at the corner of whatever the industrial road that goes around by. It's just sitting there, it's right on the edge of the airport. That's maintenance or aviation, and, and aviation it? doesn't want to give anything up. They don't even like uh, the state of Vermont district maintenance using. Oh, well, we own and them. We own them. <laughs> in, in anticipation, well, the feds kind of give them the money so they own them, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah. And so the, the, the question they're asking them on the pilot payments, that's kind of a, of course we do. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know how if we can, well, other than not, not allowing them in at all, there's not much we can do to restrict the use of the shed road, but that's public through fair, uh, through affair. Um, yeah, I think they're con they're concerned with that. Obviously, is the, the as they expressed it, the two homeowners on both sides of the road. What what would they need to do, and you know, and, and for the town satisfaction as well. What would they need to do to make these home homeowners not happy, but you know sort of happy to have them coming through. Do, do they need to put up fences? Do they need to 
Well, there's no room to put fences. Well, this is it. They're looking for, you know, mitigation. Something, right? So, so their question is, do they need to improve this access to accommodate the two homes at the entrance? I think my personal opinion, the answer is yes. They need to do something, and they need to figure out what that is, and they need to speak to the homeowners um, to de de reach that agreement. It's not up to the board, and I kind of said that to them when I was talking on the phone. It's really not up to the board to decide. It's it's up to the homeowners to decide, um, you know, what would satisfy them. Well, that conversation was had over a year ago. Uh, yeah, pretty same pretty, conversation pretty that they would have to yeah. approach the, the landowners. Which landowners? <laughs> The only mitigation I see is they, they buy me out and bulldoze the house. Because <laughs> there's no room in it. There's not enough room there now. And from the town's perspective, uh, putting in money into that 350000 If that was to go to Maplewood, I don't know that I would agree to that. But, I don't, you know, I guess... I guess if that was the last case, you know, the best case scenario, I mean, there would be some kind of, maybe we'd participate somehow to get the access as long as the well, town I trucks mean, and police department and everything went out that way. The only thing I could see is if we took it, if we were to put any money into it, we'd have to have an easement from the town property right to... to through the, all the way to the road, the main road? Correct. Right. And turn it into an... An access for Elm everything. Street or something. Uh, you pick your name. I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's just. Well, I think it would be just for municipal services and for the police department and town trucks and the GMTA. I don't think it'd be a public, open to the public. Right. You have to have an easement, though. You'd have to. You'd have to have ownership somehow yeah. from. Yeah. Hmm. And is it worth three hundred fifty thousand? Actually, I don't even think that three hundred fifty thousand covers it because you've still got a lot of earthwork to do before you can get a roadbed from here to there. Right. Well, the other thing you got to do is think about what this new town garage, what would it cost to put that new town garage in, the benefits and rewards of that versus what you're spending on the other end. Yeah. Well, I would say throw it back in the GMTAs ballpark and have them talk to the landowners okay see what they can do because mm -hmm. I don't see any of this that really it's good I mean this is something they want to do they want to take and buy our basically they're buying our land with a new town garage not that that one over there doesn't deserve to come down it's been up there for a long time and it's, it has its problems so I'll uh I'll chat with them and let them know. Um, I'll even uh, I'll ask them for a timeline as well when they yep. think they'll do that, and then maybe ask them to come into a board meeting. And yep. So you can, I mean, if they if they want to move this forward one way or the other, they need to come in and be able to answer the questions and talk details at that point. If they meet with the landowners and talk to you know Maplewood. Well, the th the thing of it is, is I mean, on the on the pilot part of it, I would expect. Diane would expect a payment either from here or from there. Yeah. No matter where they go in town. Right. Right. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. Got that one, Ben? I do. Anything more on this? Okay. A uh, letter of support requested from from Montpelier for Dog River Junction Road scoping study decision. Yep, there's a draft in your folders of, of what, I, what I drafted for that. There's also some uh, documents. This is for a uh, bicycle and uh, pedestrian grant scoping study. Um, I think there should be there should be a map in there that shows you as well where they're looking uh, down on the Junction Road for that. There's another uh, letter from Montpelier City Council uh, with regards to that grant as well in your package. So again, it's just a, it's a letter of support to Montpelier saying we, you know, as a neighboring 
property owner that we support their that is application for, the, for approval. That's for the wine in red? Yes. But that's already in. Yeah, but they're, they're doing an additional scoping study on top of that. Um, what are they here. looking to do? I think, uh, let's see, it says uh, the western end of the rec path, uh, the Dog River Park and Ride, the Dog River Rec area, and the Amtrak station. It looks like uh, the study would specifically examine bicycle and pedestrian connectivity. Western end of Montpelier's rec path from there gotcha. all the way through. Gotcha. And then the study will take into account uh, public concerns, input, surrounding land use, right away, natural, cultural resources, permitting requirements, utilities, for long and short term improvements. Okay. Uh, so again, I, I just I submitted a draft. If you approve the draft, I can sign it on behalf of the board and, and send it out. If not, that's fine too. Um, motion on this. Are you in favor of this? I make a motion to approve these letters as they're presented to the uh, project manager into the city of Montreal. Right? So it's, it's just this one. Right? Just the one? Just this one. Okay. Wait a second. What is it that they want to do? Just study. Just study. study, study. But, but the bike and pad, to extend the bike and pad path in the junction. Sure. Amtrak. Down to Amtrak. Near your house, right? I don't know. Um, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, people already do it. I'm not sure right. what they're studying. Well, I think what they want to do is alternatives to improve bicycle and pedestrian connectivity to this area. So they're probably going to do something and widen that from, from where it gets off at the un, uh, the underpass to down through to the junction. They want to and make a bad the... bike path and walking from where it ends now. <coughs> you know, right at the right at oh, where you turn. Area, yeah. yeah. Right but where it goes under the bridge. But the how they're going to do it. Once you cross the bridge you're in Berlin. Right, right. exactly. But they want to go down by the plant to the ball fields as well. Oh. And get them off the road. Right? That's where yeah, because everybody's on the road from that point on. Years ago, Cross Vermont, Cross Vermont Trail wanted to designate Junction Road as their part of their official trail, and a whole lot of residents turned out and yeah. said no, because there is already enough traffic. And as you go down Junction Road, there's some turns and all where people just do not feel safe. And so, but, but I just find it interesting though that Montpelier is looking at. Berlin land. That's. Well, they're just. It, no, they're not really looking at, it, at the Berlin side. They're looking at still on the on the Montpelier property, and they're just looking to do a, a study to see if there's a way. To, it is, or is there a way to do is it? Is there a way not? to make it safer for pedestrian right. and bike traffic through that area? It's not that they're doing anything. They're just studying it, trying to figure out a way to so make again, it safer. Part of that is is talking yeah. with the public as well to yeah. see if they're. Are they requesting any money from us no. as part of their no, search? No, no. I didn't read into that, but I wanted to be clear. Yes. No. Okay. Have they done anything about the issue at the sewage plant as far as how everything breaks and is unhealthy no. down there? I haven't heard any more on that. Because that's like the exact same area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything more. We had something a couple of while back, yeah. but nothing, nothing ever transpired that I remember. Okay. Any further discussion? No, well, yeah. Do, do I send a letter or no? We're about to vote. Yeah. Letter of support. Okay. Send the letter. Uh, so we have a motion. <coughs> um, 
the motion to accept the letter. To accept yeah. the letter. Yeah. yeah. I'm just I'm really trying to figure out why they. Well, um, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, before we go on to this, uh, before we go any further, two vents. I forgot to do the RFP for community services facilities janitorial. Yes, sir. Thank you. That was one of the two items. <laughs> <laughs> This was a single bid, too. Yes. This is a single bid. The response is to the request for the cleaning proposal. It's from Lamb Company Cleaning Services, LLC. They're located at P.O. Box 75, Plainfield, Vermont. They did a site visit, and that's included in their response. Site visit was conducted on Wednesday, May 4th at 1 p.m. with Vince Conti and me, Jean Lamica. I brought up a cleaning concern not listed in attachment D. Um, there's much detail here, including a proposed summary, profile on the proposing firm, their work plan schedule is cleaning can be performed by a two to four person crew with one supervisor. The supervisor has been in the business's employee since February 2021. They propose that the cleaning services can be performed Monday and Thursday evenings and that they understand that we seek cleaning two times per week or they could provide cleaning services by one employee who's been in their employee since August 2020. And it may be the same two evenings or two different other evenings if we go that route. Uh, they say that LAMCO is a part-time job, need to check employee availability, etc. They go into, like I said, a great deal of detail. I'm looking to see what their proposed cost is. They've attached exhibits. They have references. still don't see a cost yet, so bear with me. Okay, there are Exhibit 5, Attachment E, Cost Proposal Bid Form, Monthly Service Price of $1,170, a total yearly price of $14,040, and Proposal Total for the first year, the $14,040. They've included their certificate of liability insurance, and they have two in here for us to pass around and review. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to have Vince investigate this company a little bit. I didn't hear anything about bondability for working in the police department. I'm looking to see if there's anything included there, but I would concur with doing more research into this bid um, to give us additional information or allowing us more time to review the submission. If, if they're not bondable, if their employees aren't, you can't have a problem. You can't have them in the police department. So, mm. so a, mo a motion to have Vince taken uh, due, due diligence on this contract? So moved. Hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, what else did you have up there? The uh, culvert replacement that we added. Well, let's take and get Diane taken care of here. And okay. We'll go after that. Okay. Uh, FY22 reserves discussion and decision, Diane? Yeah, I sent information to you um, through email, but I've got extra copies here. For a and this is the reserves we're going to discuss because last year we reserved some money and we spent some of it this year, 
and I want to reserve money um, from the current budget for next year for, for, for projects. So the first two items on the top are the town clerk's office. We replace the wall in that office, which costs thirty thousand dollars. We get twenty-three thousand dollars from the insurance company, which I put in reserves. And then because obviously that's not going to you know cover the thirty thousand, we had a reserve in bond building renovation of six thousand twelve dollars. So with those two together, it's slightly under thirty thousand, so be like five hundred dollars short. So I'd like to use the reserves for that. Uh, then we have a hundred dollar that we get for donation from the police department or for the police department from the Elks Club. So we need to put that into the PD fund. The recreation board spent money for ice rink and swim lessons, so we need to take that out of the reserve for them. On the capital budget, uh, we had re we had reserved money for the new police vehicle, and we spent forty almost forty two thousand for that. We still have I think of like five to I think more than five thousand left in that. And then the computer upgrade, our new server is going to exceed what we have uh, in the reserve, which was 17300 We did get um, quarterly payments from the state for a total of $12,999 for future road work. It's kind of a grant that they did like last year. Like if you look at the one above it, it says highway paving and tire. We had a grant last year from uh, the state in which we spent $30,215 of it. I think that's like within pennies of what we received. So we spent all of that money, but then this year they gave us almost $13,000. We haven't spent that money yet, so I want to reserve it into next year if we can. Then in going through um, the budget with uh, and actual expenses with the road foreman and Vince, we have found many categories that we underspent in for a total of 86500 $86, that I'd like to roll over into the reserves for next year. And it has to do with summer equipment repairs, sand uh, that we didn't use, we didn't use all of our sand, um, salt for the winter roads, winter equipment repairs, guardrails, energy improvements, trash removal. So I'd like to roll that all over, like I say, for a total of 86500 yeah. The bridge maintenance, I did, we did use up that money from that we had set aside for the Fisher Road culvert plus some, but we used up all of that reserve, which is 246.097.14. And then we had money for the culvert loan, we had two payments scheduled for FY22, the culvert didn't get done in time, so I want to roll over one of the payments to FY23, which is 20500 <coughs> We have reserves in the police department of 4265 that have to do with longevity payments and uh, In long, yeah, longevity education, which because the union contract um, hasn't passed for the new year, I want to take that money and roll it over into next year because I will definitely be paying that. And it's actually FY22 payments, but we won't be making the payments to FY23. Uh, and then we had money in the planning commission with $12,000 that we had not spent in the planning commission. $8,000 of that should be the match that we have for our grant the town center that has to do the CVMC uh, bike path. And I think that it all is 32,000, but we have to, or it's 40,000, excuse me. Uh, we'll get 32,000 from the grant, but we have to have a match of 8,000. So we're gonna take that out of the planning commission. I need to roll over that money because that project is still underway. This has not been approved or hasn't been finished yet, I should say. And then $4,000 for future projects for the planning commission because we, you know, we can roll over that money. And then the conservation commission has spent $16,306.53 for signs and watershed association fees. So I'd like to have all those changes reserved for next year. And we have to do it before the end of the fiscal year this year. That's why I'm presenting it this, this week. So on the highway, in the reserves, the eighty-six thousand. Is any of that in inventory? No. Okay. No, it's just that we didn't buy as much as we had anticipated because we did have inventory and we were able to use a lot yeah. of that out. I make the motion to approve the FY twenty-two reserves as um, discussed tonight uh, with us by Diane, and um, it seems reasonable and easily explainable. I appreciate that overview. Second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Motion carries. Okay. Okay, now your culvert. The culvert. So, again, it's in your package to be signed as well. Uh, there's a request to, uh, from a resident over on Pine Hill to replace an existing culvert. Uh, I believe it's a 37-foot culvert with uh, a 40-foot culvert. Uh, I believe it's a, an 18-inch culvert going in. And uh, the only comment I had from our own foreman was he thought that uh, he thought that there was a 15 inch in there. He, he didn't confirm it, but he said the, his only concern would be if we're putting an 18 in it, inch in, was there enough depth? But the property owner has said that the, the, that it's an 18 inch that's existing in there now, so they're replacing it with it's the same. same. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, it's an 18 inch in there now. If I find that to be different, I will update you. I wouldn't downsize it. There's a 37 foot culvert in there now, and they're going to replace it with a 40. Two 20s. Two 20s. Motion. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Any abstentions? I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, approval of hiring bonus for police. This is a carryover from the, the meeting, the last meeting that we had with the chief where it was discussed, but since it was not a specific agenda item for decision, um, the board couldn't vote on it. Um, I think the general consensus was it was Okay, the Chiefs moved forward um, uh, based on that, uh, and we do have a new officer. Uh, so this is kind of the tail ahead of it, you know, the horse, you know, but uh, that's the opportunity to make the official motion to approve that hiring bonus. I'd make a motion to approve the hiring bonus as discussed previously for the new hire on the police department. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Just to jump in on that before you move forward, I also just want to point out that there is a liquor license for approval as well and Ooh. signature. Um, and that is because of the sale, the change of ownership. Okay. For that. Who, uh, Where who was, was the, uh, what was, what business was sold and which was, was, was the have you got the document right there? Folks? Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, thank you. So Good I'm going to start with making the motion to approve the liquor license for approval and signatures for Pizza Hut at 1480 U.S. Route 302. It's a first class under new ownership. I'll second it. Yeah. Any discussion? Is it still going to be Pizza Hut or is it changing yeah, no, name? It's still going to be Pizza Hut. Okay. Uh, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-24 for payroll from May 8, 2022 to May 21st of this year paid on May 25th of 2022 in the amount of $45,602.56. Also payroll warrant 22-25 for payroll from May 22nd this year to June 4th this year to be paid on June 8, 2022 in the amount of $49,488.64. Payable warrant 22G23 with checks 22019 to 22065 in the total amount of $423,241.64. The May general journal entries, the May budget status report and the trial balance report, also the May delinquent tax report, reconciled May bank statements for the general fund and sewer water divisions and the main general journal entries. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table, Dave? Well, I just want 
okay. bring something up. I, I had a few residents with uh, you know the stuff that's going on down in Texas and these mass shootings and stuff. They were asking about uh, which I had no information on, and I'd actually reached out to Vince if we had a resource officer at the school and who that individual was, and then if there's any, if we know as a board of what if there was an incident here, would be it at National uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, CVH, or anything like that, who's going to be the responding officers, and if there's any plan put in effect in a small community like Berlin. Uh, and I'd just like to, you know, have, have some information on that if something was to happen who's going to respond and who we depend upon. I know we have uh, the chief as our emergency management individual uh, with a backup that I can't remember who that individual was at this point. But uh, I, I just, uh, yeah, I just think that we need to be more vigilant and start to open our eyes up a little bit that we're not secluded from the possibilities. You know, we have the mall here, uh, the hospital, and that, that, that I think, you know, it'd be nice to to know what the plan is if something was to happen in Berlin. Anything else? That's all I have. Yeah, I have a, a couple. Uh, number one, I think, and it's easy for me to say, and I don't know what the current process is, but I was a little disappointed to, to see only one bid for every every potential item. So. Uh, maybe we need to put an item on our agenda to think of different methods, using technology, using better outreach. I don't, I don't know what to do, but it would be better to get more bids than one each. So uh, we tried. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you did. So we, I, I just I even I even <laughs> blind invited people from us up in the Burlington area on a yeah. couple of these to try to get some some bids and proposals. You know, and. Okay. Uh, I do too. I, I do too, but I just wanted to throw that out. But you're right. I would have certainly liked more bids as well. Yeah. I, I think there was there's three out of the four bids that have gone out. I sent to more than five, yeah. five or more, yeah. to try to get responses. Okay. And two two of them I followed up with calls, and they're not doing business anymore apparently because the the mail was returned, mm -hmm. their phone numbers were no longer uh, being answered, and there was a the number has changed or no longer used messages as well so it's, it's, it's a yeah. challenge um, so I, I forgot to ask this and I meant to and I know we've already voted on it but was the public work staff position in uh, voted on in the previous budget no, no. okay All right. forgot to ask that and the other thing is my final uh, thing and it, it may be just me knocking on the town clerks or the new town clerk's door at some point is uh, I'd love information about the new voting machines we got. Uh, you know, who it's was, so would they. Who, would, <laughs> who bought we've them, been, what been the trained. contract was, what brand they are. There's been a lot of controversy in the last two years about uh, <laughs> elections and there's a lot of information and news coming out now about people being indicted for improprieties and, and uh, crimes in the last couple of election cycles. So I think as a it's kind of the leadership administration of the town. Uh, it would be good to have answers if people ask questions. And you know, it, it's our responsibility. Obviously, the town clerk is, is number one, but it's our responsibility to make sure the citizens of Berlin feel good about their elections. I think. So I'd love any information, so maybe I'll knock on your Come door. Come on in and visit. Rosemary and I did have a training. I mean, we went to a training, and then somebody came in specifically walked us through stuff and all and we're we're wonderful with it it's it's good. good we don't anticipate there being that there could be any problem with it at all so. well i do not have anything tonight thank Joe? you uh, i don't have anything but to answer the um the, the whole school and mass casualty type situations uh, emergency management meets on the second Thursday of the month. This Thursday, you're invited. I'll be there. Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah, like I said, I was asked by a couple of residents and I couldn't answer the questions. I just feel that, you know, with the way things are going in the country, 
it'd be better off to be prepared and know who's responding to what. There, there is an ICS um, training available to select board. Our select board has done it in the past. Not all of them, but like three of them. But I read that in the review. No, I didn't know. So nobody then on this current board has been through that specific training. Joe's probably got more than enough <laughs> training, but I mean as a select board member. Sure. for a proposal? Yeah. That's just my round table item. Right if you're going to ask me. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was wondering what this was doing in the back of my packet. Yes. So, my round table item is to just inform you that uh, working with Diane as well, we put together a request for a proposal for the Grand List 2024 town-wide appraisal. Um, talking with other towns as well, uh, we need to get this out very soon because they are booked. They're struggling. To, to find people to do the town-wide appraisals. Um, so we, we drafted this up and it's uh, basically ready to go. I will send it to you guys all to the board this week. Um, and I will ask probably for the next meeting for an approval on this to, to, uh, to put this out. It's just to prepare you for it because uh, we, we need to get it out there and, and find, find some bidders, Carl. <laughs> well, and for what the assessors are telling us, because we spoke with them as well, once we do have the approval and we send it out, after that is when we contact the state and say, look, we've got people that can do this on this date, and then we begin the process with them. But we have to have all of our ducks in a row for us. Mm -hmm. So and that's how the process works. Any, anything else? No. no anything, no. anything for executive session? Yes. I make the motion to exit the regularly scheduled select board meeting this evening and enter into executive session. I'll second that. 